As soon as they get on board the venture in New York, there was a little scene of Preston showing Anne to her cabin that we ultimately felt we just didn't need the scene um, in terms of telling the story of the film. So it was taken out mainly for pacing reasons. Hope you find it to your liking. It's quite comfortable. Um, it's obviously the wash basin. Uh, your towels and linens are under your bed. Yes, I know that's not a very pleasant smell, is it? I'm sure it'll disperse in a day or two. The closet, uh, your costumes. I hope you'll find everything Preston, in order. Preston, where exactly are we going? Singapore, I believe. That's it? Nowhere else. That's really a question for Mr. Denham. Good night. The scene in The Hold where um, Jimmy's character is introduced was actually two scenes that we shot, which ultimately in the movie we blended into one scene. And so this is one of the scenes in its original form. You'll be able to see we use pieces from it in the finished film, but this is the full length version of the scene, which plays somewhat differently to how it does in the finished movie. Stumbles backwards as he sinks to his knees. Oh, Christ, this is so cheesy, Carl. This is just... Cheesy? Cheek? What was that? No, Jack, it's great. He's on his knees. He's bleeding. Compliment to the chef. There you go. Breakfast special. Oh, Christ. Oh, God. Lamb's brains and walnut sauce. Fend it off, Jack. You can make it to the end of the scene. Focus. Focus. Okay. She's staring at the body. It horrifies her. She's in shock. She screams. He's sinking down to his knees. There's blood everywhere, lots of blood. Can you write it? That ain't how it is. When a man's knifed in the back, there ain't much blood. And he doesn't scream. The only sound he makes is a rush of air, like when you puncture a ball. It drops fast. Like a stone, it's the shock. Did you get that, Jack? Oh, yeah. Because there's no such thing as a slow death, see? The light in a man's eyes? One minute it's there, and then... It's gone. Nothing. We wanted to... to give uh, Adrian's character, Jack Driscoll, much more attitude towards the casting of Anne Darrow. And we, we ultimately didn't really use much of this antagonism in the finished film. But we originally started out with a version of the story where he had much more of a stronger opinion about Denham's choice of actress. Hey, I'm not saying she has to be famous. All you have to do is find a real actress. You haven't even met her. Give her a chance for Christ's oh, sake. Well, half the theaters in New York are closed. You had your pick. Hands from the theater. Vaudeville, please, give me a break. I mean, how do you expect me to write for a glorified chorus girl? I cast Anne because she's special. She's right for this part. Special? That's what you said about Dolores. Hmm? The blonde? You remember her, the one who couldn't act. She was in your last picture. That's a low blow, Jack. I learned my lesson. There's not going to be any funny business. Whatever you say, God. Just keep her away from me, all right? Anne. Uh, Anne Darrow, this is Jack Driscoll, the uh, well-known playwright and uh, respected screenwriter and uh, critic. 
There's a scene that we, we shorten to a really uh, very short little bit of Anne choosing what outfit she's going to wear um, when she's first going to meet Jack Driscoll and she's stressing out about it. And we shot it in a much more comedic way, which was kind of nice, but it, again, it was taking up a bit too much space in the film and so we, um, we truncated it down to a much shorter version in the finished film. <laughs> It's nice to meet you, Mr. Driscoll. I'm actually quite familiar with your work. <laughs> yes, I... Actually, I'm quite familiar with your work. Actually, I'm quite familiar with your work. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. No, too much. We wanted to build up the um, suspicion that Hayes has about Engelhorn's motives and the fact that Engelhorn has been bought off by Denim to take the ship into dangerous waters. And so we shot um, a scene between Engelhorn and Hayes of which a little piece appears in the movie and we also then immediately followed that w with a scene between Jimmy and Hayes where Hayes is carrying a lot of the anger that he's left the Engelhorn scene with. And in the finished movie, shorter versions of these are used in a slightly different context. And so it's nice to be able to see it as it was originally shot. This heading puts us southeast of Sumatra. A new course, Mr. Hayes. Captain, it takes us outside the shipping lanes. What of it? Seven vessels have been lost in these waters. Lost in what? A bank of fog, a sea mist. I don't believe in fairy stories. How much did he pay you? That's enough, Ben. How much? To compromise the safety of your ship and your crew? They're dangerous in any job. More so for those who go to see him. That's how it is. Whatever you got, I hope it's worth it. Want to be on a ship the rest of your life? I do. No, you don't, Jimmy. You want to get yourself educated, give yourself some options. That's why you have to take this seriously. I do, Mr. Hayes. I do. Look, I've been reading. Where'd you get this? I borrowed it. On on long term loan. Have you read it, Mr. Hayes? Look at this, look, look, look at this. Adventures on a tram steamer, see? Just like us. No, Jimmy. Not like us.
We shot a whole little plot thread with Preston stumbling upon Denim's map that was a much more complicated than what ended up in the movie and I think it was really because of the complexity that we ended up taking it out. It seemed unnecessary because ultimately we just wanted to get to Skull Island um, as quickly as we can. But it was still a nice little bit of interaction between um, Denim and Preston. The filter box? Preston, it's right under your nose. Come on, we've got a picture to shoot. The scene of um, Anne dancing with Jimmy was originally um, a full dance routine that we'd choreographed and Jamie and Naomi had thoroughly rehearsed it. And in the end of the day, it's just unfortunately one of those scenes that you just don't have time for it. And so it was used as part of a montage, um, a little tiny piece of it. But it's nice to see the full dance. This is just a little scene that Andy Circus actually came up with the, the idea for this. It was just a humorous little thing involving Lumpy and a cabbage that even though I liked it a lot, we ultimately uh, felt that it was undermining the tension of the moment. This is actually interesting because it's a scene uh, that was featured in the trailer where they're on the beach doing some filming and Anne screams and Kong's roar echoes back and uh, that was actually quite a, a nice piece of the trailer 
Um, because, of course, when the trailer was made, we had every expectation that this scene was going to be in the movie. But as it was, we felt that we didn't need it. Again, we just wanted to get on with the story. You have to ultimately ask yourself, do you need the scene in the film? What will the film be like without the scene? And you're sort of always asking that question during the cutting, especially when the film is those last stages and you're trying to make it as tight as you possibly can. You're feeling uneasy, Anne. Feelings growing. It's washing over you. You're trembling, Anne. You're overwhelmed. Anne. 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 Look up slowly, Anne. That's it. You can't look away. It scares you. You're helpless. You want to scream, but your throat's paralyzed. What does she think she's looking at? There's just one chance. If you can scream, Try to scream, man. Try. Throw your arms across your eyes and scream. Scream, man! Scream for your life! Oh, is that a bear? That, that was a bear, wasn't it? Herb, get the camera. Where are you going? Hey, fellas! Hey, is this a good idea? We wanted to give Hayes a military background, and he's the right age to have fought in World War I, so there's a little sequence we shot which explains some of that backstory. Conserve your ammunition! You were in the army? Uh huh. The Harlem Hellfighters. 369th Infantry. Mr. Hayes led the charge across the Rhine. The 369th was the first U.S. division into France. They saw a continuous battle for 191 days, longer than anyone. Zip it, Jimmy. 369th, huh? What'd they give you guys, a Congressional Medal of Honor? French gave us a quad de gear. I meant us. You didn't give us a goddamn thing. We'll find them. Alive or dead, we bring them back. This is a, a, a fun little gag that was going to be right in the middle of the Bronto stampede. We never got it completely finished because we felt the stampede was a little too long. And so, unfortunately, this piece was the bit that we ultimately ended up taking out.
The sequence in the bottom of the log chasm was originally going to have a much slower, more lingering beginning um, involving a poem and uh, it also featuring a lot more of Lumpy and Choi dying. But again, pacing reasons meant that we tightened it up. Choi! Today I have been happy. All the day I held the memory of you and wove its laughter with the dancing light of the spray. And sowed the sky with tiny clouds of love. And sent you following the white waves of the sea. This is just a little piece of business that was going to go in the taxi cab chase in New York, which I always quite liked it. It was just taken out at the very last minute, but it's kind of cool with Adrian facing off with Kong in the taxi cab. Ah. Let go. 
This is the original conception of Kong's pursuit by the army in New York. Originally, the army were going to play a larger role, and, uh, and there was more stuff happening with them. Um, as it was in the final cut, we, we just felt we wanted to get Kong you know, up the Empire State Building a little bit quicker. So this basically goes from the ice pond sequence between Anne and Kong, the quiet scene, up until the beginning of the climb to the Empire State Building, a big piece that was going to get inserted into there. So this is a, a quite a long sequence that we're showing to you as it was originally intended to run in the movie, and it covers quite a few aspects of character. Some little pieces of this exist in the movie as a montage, but this is way more than what you see in the film. And in fact, one or two of the scenes are, were actually shot again to emphasize slightly different things. So this is the original version of quite a long, lengthy series of scenes, not just one scene that um, encompasses several different characters. It's my spare. Needs an overhaul. Sea lion up in Nova Scotia. Your leg was bitten off? <clears throat> Not just my leg. That's tough. Tough? It was a tragedy. Mr. Denham should have won an award for that picture. Best footage we ever shot. Carl, we have to talk. About what? The weather. 
um, more specifically the likelihood of fog. You have something of mine. Twelve men died, Carl. All right, on 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 this island, the, the the one hidden in the fog, the one you're looking for. The fellow who drew that was out of his mind. He was found half drowned in the middle of the ocean. It's the ravings of a madman. His crew, his crew, they, 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 they were mutilated. Are you listening? I'm telling you, the guy was delusional. Didn't you read the small print? All right? Something tore them apart. You see what happens when you get upset? You're starting to unravel. Well, you, you, you're, you're putting your lives at risk. All right? I mean, it, it's not... Preston? I mean, it, it can't even... Preston? I mean, it, it's not... Preston? Just... Preston? You can't do this. You're perspiring. I think you need a mint. What, what, what about Jack? Or, or, or her? The Take others? The mint. What? They, they, they're your friends. Yeah, they're my friends and they're all on the goddamn payroll. They trust you, Carl. And you're using them. Do you know why I took you on, Preston? Think about it. Why would I want to hire some messed up kid who failed to make it through law school? The truth is, I felt sorry for you. You may come for money, but fundamentally, you're a charity case. The funny thing is, you proved me wrong. So, you like it? You hate it? Sorry, no, it reads great. No, not for me. I'm off it. Can't afford to get smashed. I would never use you, Jack. I wouldn't do it. I would never betray a friend. I know. This is over. I'm gonna make it up to you. I swear. <clears throat> What's going on, Carl? Great writer, Jack. Seriously, look at this stuff. It's brilliant. You want another? Sure. You aced it. The love story. Thanks. I forgot. It's not a love story. Well. Nevertheless, it's a particularly inspired piece of writing. Changing course. It's from the bank. They're refusing to honor your check. Look, this is a stupid mistake. You're outside. Gonna... There's a warrant out for your arrest. Did you know that? to divert to Rangoon. Another week. That's all I ask. I haven't got a film yet. Please. I have risked everything I have on this. No, then I'm... You risked everything I have. What do you want? Tell me what you want. I'll give you anything. I want you off my ship. Thank 
unicorns in on it. That stinking German. Him and that bastard Norwegian. What Norwegian? What the hell are you talking about? The fellow who sold me that map. The skipper of a freighter. He picked up the castaway. The guy was barely alive. The only survivor of a shipwreck. And right before he died, he gave the Norwegian that map. I am telling you, Jack, they're trying to get rid of me. They're gonna dump me in Rangoon and claim it for themselves. Claim what? Carl, listen to yourself, huh? You just dragged us all out here on the pretext of making a movie for this. This is the movie, God damn it! Do you have any idea how huge it could be? The last remnant of a dead civilization, it's gonna vanish, Jack. This island is sinking. It's gonna disappear from the face of the Earth. Don't you get it? No, I don't. How would I get it, Carl? You never told me. Huh, buddy? Pal? Friend? You're damn right I didn't. What, do you think I was born yesterday? I learned this business the hard way. Nobody had the guts to back me, so I backed myself. On the basis of what, huh? A, a scrap of paper? This is real. It exists.